getting from tricks to transitions to routines, flow, or performances. This is the journey that we as poi spinners all struggle with. And I want to give you an insight into my own process for this. Drex here from Drex Factor Poi, sharing with you the love of poi spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain. And today, I'm giving you the goods on some secrets of how we can build and then release tension in our poi spinning. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow DNA, Flow Fests, Flow Toys, Juggling Calling, Pyroterra Light Toys, Spin Balls, and Ultra Poi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. And a special thanks to the first non-business friend of the channel, Johnny Howard. Thanks so much for your support, Johnny. I've been dancing with Poi for several years, but really only taking it seriously for about the past five or so of them. But throughout that time, I've worked off of one single principle that forms the bedrock of my approach to poi dance and performing with it. The poi is an extension of you. What does that mean? So often we fall into a trap as flow artists where we treat the prop as other, where we make it a stand-in for a person or a thing and essentially come up with different ways to reinterpret what the prop is. But what if we throw that idea out entirely? What if the poi doesn't so much reveal something about our relationship with objects or ideas, but part of our inner nature? What if when we feel angry, happy, in love, or afraid, we see that displayed as much in the poi and what we do with it as we do our own bodies? We've all seen instances in which costuming is seen as an extension of the character in theater, dance, and movies. So why can't we have the props be an extension of our character as well? Why can't we just see our poi as being a part of our arms, but a little bit longer? Why can't we see them as being everything we're feeling blown up to a massive size? Okay, easy to say, but what does that actually look like? So what I'm gonna do here is outline a theory of performance that is quite different from what's considered the norm in poi spinning and frankly, the flow arts in general. So if we're reinventing the wheel here, what does that actually look like? In this video, I wanna talk about some fundamentals, from timing and direction to shapes and expression and tricks. And I also wanna lay out two contrasting ideas I borrowed from music theory, tension and resolution. The idea here is that we can do things both with music as well as with our props that add tension to our experience of them. Things that can raise our anticipation, make something feel a little uncomfortable, raise the level of drama, things that demand a return to something that feels a little more stable. And at the same time, we need those elements that add tension because if all we did was just present something that feels stable to our audience, what we'd present would seem pretty boring. We need to add that tension to get the audience engaged, to have conflict that we either resolve or choose not to, depending upon the piece. And before we go anywhere, let's just say for the record that all of this is intended to be a subjective presentation of how poi spinning lands with me. You may experience something very different when you see people spin poi, and that's totally fine. How you structure your spinning and your art is up to you but this is how I see it. So how do we add tension or resolution to our spinning? Let's take a look. The first thing to establish is that the ultimate form of resolution is for the poi to be at rest. No matter how the poi is spinning, there's an element of tension. We can see the effort required to keep the poi in motion and it's very spinning is an act of defiance against gravity. So long as this movement continues, there will be some level of tension. It can only be resolved completely by bringing the poi to a complete stop. But beyond that, let's take a look at this through the lens of timing and direction. When I see poi spinning in each timing and direction, I see different degrees of tension based upon two very important qualities, separation versus togetherness and different kinds of symmetry. When it comes to separation versus togetherness, what I'm talking about are the moments in which the poi are either moving together or moving apart. In together same and split same, the movement is always consistent with the poi always either being together or always being apart. This in itself gives something of a feeling of stability to both. At the same time, spinning the poi in together opposite or split opposite makes it so that the poi alternate between being apart and together. This in itself produces a certain amount of tension, but it also introduces us to working with symmetry that mirrors across an axis as well. In together opposite, the movements of the two poi seem to reflect along a vertical axis, one that has bilateral symmetry much like the human body. 
In split opposite, on the other hand, that symmetry is across a horizontal axis, and this adds a great deal of tension to it, specifically because it does not line up with the natural symmetry of the human body. So here's how all these pieces come together in my mind. In together same, for example, the poi are always moving together, and to my eyes, the net effect of this is very harmonious and it feels very stable. Only stopping the poi moving entirely feels more like a resolution than this. In together opposite, the poi may have more tension in their movement by switching between moving together and moving apart, but adding symmetry that matches with the human body, giving it a very pleasing and stable feel. I would rank this as second to together same in terms of presenting as feeling resolved and stable. When I move the poi in split time same direction, they're always separate. On the one hand, this feels somewhat stable as the movement of the poi is constant in relation to each other, but the separation also adds an element of tension to this. In my mind, both split same and together opposite add one element of tension to their movements, while also maintaining pieces that feel more resolved and stable. I give together opposite a very small edge in feeling slightly more stable here, but not by much. And the timing and direction mode with the most tension to it? definitely split time opposites. Not only are the poi moving together and apart constantly, but the symmetry of this pattern is fundamentally unlike that of the human body, making it something that practically begs for resolution. I don't think it's any coincidence that this is also the least commonly used timing and direction mode as well. So even based upon these pieces, we can totally play around with our capacity to add tension to our poi spinning, as well as find resolution to it. For example, if we start by spinning in together same and then switch back and forth between it and split opposites, the difference makes for a really stark contrast of feeling very full of tension and then resolving to something that feels much more stable. We can also build tension in a slower fashion, perhaps starting with together same and then moving up to together opposites and then making the jump to split opposites before finally resolving back in together same to resolve the tension quickly. Or we could start in together same and add our tension all at once, switching to split opposites and then gradually releasing it by first switching to split same and then down to together same. We can also go for a bit of a journey, too. We can start from a place of some tension and together opposites and add a little more by switching to split same. We dial things down to together same before revving them all the way back up with split opposites. We dial down to split same before returning to split opposites. Bring down our dynamics to together opposites and then dial them back up to split opposites before finally resolving to that most stable of positions, a stall. And the poi stopped moving. See what a roller coaster that felt like? And that's just using timing and direction to build and release tension. What other tools do we have for accomplishing that same task? How about the shapes of different poi patterns? For the purposes of this video, I'm going to keep the palette of poi patterns I'm working with fairly narrow. Try saying that 10 times fast. We're going to stick with different variations of poi flowers. And through all these patterns, there's one overriding principle that I've found in my own work. Resolution and stability come from the hand and poi moving in consonance. What does that mean? Well, let's start with the most basic of all flower patterns, a simple extension. Here, you can see that the hand and poi are moving together in a way that feels very balanced and resolved. But we can add a bit to the tension of these movements by adding in petals to this pattern and turning it into an inspin flower. There's a bit more tension, but it still feels fairly stable. But here's the thing. This is not actually what inspin flowers look like if you try to graph them. They look less like multiple nested circles and more like cardioid shape patterns in which the curve of the shape is constantly changing. This actually means that there are multiple presentations for inspin flowers. The first version I showed utilizes a technique that my friend Alien John calls lockouts, in which the hand pauses to facilitate performing a pedal. We can just as easily keep the hand moving the entire time and we wind up with a pattern that looks more like the graph. Notice the difference here. The lockouts feel more stable, and taking them away adds tension. So what about anti-spin flowers then? To my eye, anti-spin flowers add slightly more tension than in-spin flowers without lockouts. And I think the fact that they produce petals that are sharper and more narrow also makes them feel a little bit more aggressive or angry than in-spin flowers do. See, there's this concept in psychology known as the Bubakiki effect. When you show people two figures, one round and one sharp, and ask them to assign the names Booba and Kiki to each of them, the vast majority of people, regardless of language or culture, will assign the name Booba to the round figure and Kiki to the sharp figure. And even more than that, I would argue that Booba feels more friendly and relaxed than Kiki does. 
And I think that this effect informs poi patterns as well. Like Kiki, anti-spin flowers feel much more energetic than in-spin flowers do. There's a lot of tension in them, and I would also say a lot of emotion. There is one last flower-based pattern that I'd like to discuss here and that's pendulums. When we produce big, long pendulums, which are sometimes called extendulums, we go back and forth between the sharper lines of a kiki-like pattern and the smoother lines of a booba-like pattern. I think that we can see by switching from pendulums to extensions that there is a feeling of resolution, of consonance between the hand and poi. When switching between lockout inspin flowers and pendulums, I'd venture to say a little bit of tension has been resolved. Your mileage may vary on this one, but I feel like the pendulums sit between extensions and lockout inspin flowers on the scale of tension and resolution. So in order of greatest to least tension, we have anti-spin flowers, inspin flowers, lockout inspin flowers, pendulums, and extensions. But how do these interact with each other and with timing and direction? Well, I think that there are many places where you can both add as well as remove tension by moving pieces back and forth. I honestly think that this is part of what makes one of my favorite poi patterns of all time work. This pattern starts from extensions and together opposites, and when my hands come together at either the top or the bottom, I can switch over to performing an anti-spin versus extension cap hybrid with my hands in together same. Even though my hands have switched to a mode with more stability, the addition of that anti-spin increases the tension such to the point that returning to the together opposites extension feels like a resolution to me. Now let's put this into practice then, shall we? I want to create a 15 second routine that's going to slowly build tension over the course of the first 10 seconds and then resolve it in the last five. Let's see that in action. I'm going to start off with my poi paused and pull them out into a windmill or poi truvian man to get things started off with a bang. This is technically an inspin flower and split same. I'm going to up the tension a hair by switching to anti-spin, but I don't want to add too much tension just yet, so I'm going to switch into together opposite to get there, and then a split same wall plane hybrid with both anti-spin and extension components. Now I'm going to give the audience a false ending by stalling the two poi down and then moving one out and up before launching into split opposites anti-spin and switching to a split op extension pirouette, split op anti-spin, split op extension pirouette going the other way, split op anti-spin, together same anti-spin, together same tuck turn, and stall to finish it off. See how I built up and then released the tension on this one? Let me show it to you again at full speed. So these are two tools that you can use to build and release tension in your poi choreography. Yes, I have way more to say about the emotions that we can express with different poi patterns, but that'll be the topic of volume two of this series. For now, I think you've got enough to start experimenting and seeing how you can make these tools work for your own spinning. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into some of the fundamentals of poi spinning as it pertains to performance. Please do me a favor, and if you did, please leave me a like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel so you are the first to know when I release a new video and to help my channel grow. Real quick, I just wanted to throw out a huge thank you because this video would not be possible without the kind support of these wonderful people right here. These are my Flow patrons over on Patreon, and they, along with the people listed down in the description, help to make this video and all the videos on my channel possible. Do you like poi content? Do you like tutorials, flow sessions, and vlogs on flow arts culture? Consider signing up to support my work. I want to bring flow arts to the wider world and help people connect with their brains and their bodies through prop spinning. So help me do it. Head on over to patreon.com slash directsfactorpoi and sign up. You can do that by either clicking on the card that just popped up on YouTube or by using the link down in the description. Not only will you be supporting this mission, but you'll also be able to get early access to all of my content, a vote in what content I produce in the future, and a host of other awesome rewards, such as getting a special weekly poi lesson delivered to your inbox that is available only to my supporters. Go give that a look and please consider supporting the channel. Thank you in advance. What are your thoughts on this approach to thinking about poi spinning? Am I reinventing the wheel or overthinking things? Leave me a comment and let me know. I have no shortage of thoughts about how to build combos and routines. This is definitely the first video of hopefully many on these topics. 
Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to get outside to flow today, and I will see you with a new video on Friday. Peace.